Hi, I'm Steve Clapham. Welcome to our Accounting Red Flag series. And in this video, number four, we're going to look at margin comparisons. So let's get to it. The example I'm going to use is Patisserie Valerie. And the reason I'm doing that is Patisserie Valerie was a big fraud in the UK. And I think that it was really relatively easy to spot. And the simplest and easiest way to spot it would have been using this margin comparison. You can see from the chart that what I've got is I've compared Patisserie Valerie's EBIT margin with those of its peers. And you can see that Domino's UK has got a higher margin. And the reason for that is Domino's is a franchise business and you'd expect it to have higher margins. But when you compare Patisserie Holdings margins with its more direct peers, the UK quoted Weatherspoons, Restaurant Group, Fulham Shore, companies which have pubs with all day dining or pizza restaurants or a restaurant chain in the case of um, the restaurant group, you can see that Patisserie Holdings has got a much, much higher margin. And its margins are much closer to those of Starbucks. What I've done here is I've said, okay, well, let's look at another example. And I've separated out the comparison of patisserie holdings with Starbucks and with Costa Coffee. And you can see that its margins are much higher than Costa, in spite of the fact that Costa at the time was part of Whitbread. And Whitbread was a group with two divisions, Premier Inns and Costa, and a third line in its accounts, in its segments for corporate HQ. That HQ cost in this particular year was 35 million or over 1% of revenues. How likely is it that Patisserie Valerie, a much, much smaller business, would have had higher margins than Costa, even before Costa's share of the 1% of revenues in HQ costs? Patisserie Holdings was taking the full amount of all the costs of being a public company. And Patisserie Holdings was also showing margins which were equivalent to those of Starbucks. And Starbucks, one of the most efficient coffee operators in the world, if not the most efficient, highly unlikely that it could be making margins that high. So what I did here was I compared Patisserie Holdings with its direct UK competitors. Now, we're very fortunate in the UK because every company has to file accounts. So it's really possible to get a good insight into what a business in a particular niche is making. And that's what I've done here. And you can see that a number of the companies are making almost zero profit, or one's making a loss. And I think this is partly down to the fact these chains are growing quite quickly. And if you're growing quite quickly, you tend to make less money because you've got more units that are in their very early stages. But we can compare Patisserie Holdings with Cafe Nero, very similar business. In fact, you would expect Patisserie Holdings to make much lower margins because Cafe Nero, like Starbucks, has got a large proportion of takeaway traffic. Whereas at Patisserie Holdings, um, excuse me, most, most of the sales were in-house where people were sitting down. And if you're sitting down, what do you need? You need a waiter or a waitress. You need a seat. And guess what? The two largest cost components in a restaurant are labor, 35 to 40% of revenues, and rents, 10 to 12% of revenues. So nearly 50% of your revenues are accounted by those two items. So it'd be extremely unlikely that a business which was predominantly eat in would make margins to the equivalent, equivalent with a business selling similar products, but mainly to take away, because the one that's selling the takeaway would ha have a much lower cost in labor and property. But what's particularly interesting about the comparison with Cafe Nero is the margins of Cafe Nero start at around 10%, almost 10%, and they half over the period. And at the same time, Patisserie holding margins pretty flat and actually went up a bit. 
That's not impossible, but you would have to understand why that was happening, because the two things are going in completely different directions, and that's quite unusual. So to conclude, one of the most effective tools for identifying a company which is committing a fraud or a company is committing earnings management is to use com comparisons of their margins. I like to compare the margins at the EBIT level rather than the gross margin level because the gross margin can vary because of definitional differences. So compare the EBIT margin with the peer group and ask yourself, does this make sense? And if it doesn't make sense, there may well be something wrong. Thanks for watching. Watch out for future videos. And don't forget, subscribe to the channel. Thanks.